Since 1992, DW Fern mic preamps, equalizers, and compressors have been used in some of the world's best studios, as well as in private use and home studios around the world. This tutorial will help you get the most from your DW Fern products, learn how to interface our products with the rest of your studio gear, and learn from Doug Fern's experience in over 40 years in pro audio. Back in 1993, soon after the VT1 microphone preamplifier was introduced, I was in Boston and I ran into a customer who had a pair of VT1s and he told me he was using them on the mix bus of his console and he really liked what it was doing for his mixes. Well, my first reaction was, wow, that doesn't sound like a good idea at all because the level and impedances and everything is wrong for putting a microphone preamplifier in that situation. I was actually kind of surprised it worked at all. I said, well, isn't the level really hot? And he says, well, I have to use a 20 dB pad on the VT1, but as long as I'm careful with my levels, it works fine and it sounds great. And I said, well, if you're gonna do that, let me design a proper pad for you so that we can at least get this to have the right characteristics for this application. So I was back at the shop and I thought about how am I gonna do this? And I realized that Many consoles, including some very fine consoles, use the mic preamp as the line input. And what they do is just pad down that um, line level to mic level, maybe change the gain of the mic preamp stage in some consoles. But basically they were doing the exact same thing as I was thinking about with this pad for the mic preamp input. So maybe it wasn't such a bad idea. So I realized that there were three parameters that had to be considered in this. One was the impedance that the pad presented to the source, which could be a console bus, a digital converter, a recorder, some other outboard device, a line level output. We also had to consider what the input to the microphone preamplifier needed to see. And the standard for that was clear that a microphone is supposed to be 150 ohm source impedance. The mic preamp input impedance is supposed to be 1500 ohms. And that's a standard that's been around for a long time and works really well. So the pad output had to look like a microphone. So it had to be 150 ohms. The other criteria was that it had to have the proper loss to drop line level down to mic level. Now, line level is generally considered to be plus 4 dBm. Mic level is nominally about minus 50. Big difference. But the VT1 and VT2 mic preamps were designed for condenser mics, which are a little bit higher level than that. So I designed a pad with 44 dB of loss. That meant that the plus 4 became a minus 40 for the microphone preamplifier. And that worked really well. That level was very good. And in fact, it gave you a couple of options because it was a little bit hot for mic level. You could run it without the pad on the zero position of the VT1 or VT2 and have one sound. And by switching in the 20 dB pad, switching to the minus 20 position on the VT1 or VT2, you had a different situation where the level was lower going to the mic preamp and it sounded a little bit different. So it gave the user some options, and that device became the LP1 line pad. Now, the LP1 is a very simple device. It's basically an H pad. This is what a schematic diagram of an H pad looks like. It just uses resistors. It's a passive device. If we turn it around this way, you can see that it looks like an H, which is where the name came from. And by selecting the values of those resistors, it gives us the characteristics that we want. It's a very simple, straightforward engineering process. It's even easier now than it was back in 1993 because now you can go online and find a pad calculator, plug in the parameters that you need, and it will give you the values for the resistors. So we built the LP1. I gave it to the customer in Boston and he, he liked it even more on his mix bus using the VT1s. So it became a product, and uh, we've sold many of them uh, since that day. Now the LP1 is a very simple device, doesn't require any power, doesn't require any maintenance, it's 
pretty foolproof. It'd be very difficult to damage it. It basically has two channels that you can use left and right for stereo or independently if you needed to, or just use one if that were the application. And uh, there's XLR female connectors on the input. The output is an XLR male connector, and the whole thing is in a steel box. Using the LP1 is very simple. It just goes in between the output of your mix bus, which could be an insert on a digital workstation, most probably these days. And in that case, you just take the um, converter output and plug it directly into the inputs of the LP1. And the output of the LP1 would then connect directly to the input to your VT2. Now, typically people use a VT2, but it could be a pair of VT1s. It could even conceivably be a different microphone preamplifier because any mic preamp can be used with the LP1. Then the output of your uh, mic preamp goes back into the mix bus, back into the converter and uh, in that insert in your master channel or wherever you're using it. And you can adjust the level on the mic preamp to give you the, the proper level and the sound that you're looking for. The LP1 is a useful accessory that many people have found to really add something on their mixes when using the mix bus, but there may be other applications for it. I heard once from a producer who was working on some vintage recordings that were done many years ago in studios that weren't real sophisticated and the equipment available wasn't very sophisticated and the recordings really had a rough edge to them that he was trying desperately to get rid of. These were classic recordings of, of well-known artists and he really wanted to try to salvage as much of that material as he could. And what he found was using the LP1 and a VT2, he was able to take those tracks, most of which were mono, and knock off the rough edges of them and make them sound pretty good. And that's what the LP1 plus a mic preamp will do on the mix bus. It takes away some of that harshness that may be a result of digital recording or bad recording in the first place, problems in the uh, original mic preamp or whatever uh, equipment was used in the original recording. This setup can help you to improve that quite a bit often. Now, if you're using something on the mix bus like a VT7 compressor or VT5 equalizer, probably there's no benefit to adding another stage with the VT2 with the LP1. You're probably going to achieve a lot of the sound you're looking for just from the tube devices that you've already have in the chain. But when you don't have that or don't need that on your mix bus and you still want to give it a little bit of that vacuum tube magic that can really help a mix, um, the LP1 along with your VT2 can really add a lot to the sound of the mix.